Meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 6 p.m. at midnight and available for viewing on YouTube. Uh, this is a study session for Tuesday, April 19, 2022. Proposals for 600 Cherokee Street Redevelopment. Madam Mayor and Commissioners, tonight you'll be receiving two presentations to purchase and redevelop 600 Cherokee Street. These are the two responses to the RFP that was published in January. Each presentation will be followed by a time for the Commission to ask questions of the applicants. As you know, it's the study session format, which means that no decision on which proposal should move forward is requested tonight. The request to select a proposal will be scheduled for a future meeting. If there's no uh, questions for me at this time, um, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Emily Duffner to present her team and her proposal. Hi. Hello. Hello. So my name is Emily Duffner. I grew up in Leavenworth. I um, attended. I grew up outside in between Easton and Leavenworth and attended Salt Creek until third grade and then the Leavenworth Catholic schools through from fourth grade through graduation. Okay. And our proposal, my husband is an architect, I'm an architectural engineer, and our proposal for the property at 600 Cherokee is the mixed-use blue stem gallery. Um, I'll go through briefly our proposal, just very quickly, because I know you're eager to hear what we have suggested, and then I'll go through in more detail the team we've put together, our experience, both personal and professionally, um, a bit more on the project details, and then I would also like to introduce one of our partners, which is LV Arts, and then we'll follow up with questions. So I have a timer, I hope <laughs> I'll try and keep it brief. Um, so this is a model of the site. We were proposing on the top floor to have loft residential apartments. We believe, yeah, this shows four smaller apartments. And on the first floor, we would like to propose small office spaces and a contemporary art gallery. You, the existing site on, um, on 6th Street would, the former Mike CDs would, yeah. <laughs> would be, yeah. Um, yeah, we've put in three individual offices and then the entire ground floor of the, the main building would be essentially half gallery space and half meeting room, office, and then amenities as well. And what's interesting about the site, too, is we propose a courtyard, an open courtyard for the back to kind of open that site up to the, um, the alleyway and to provide... It works really well with the gallery and with the office spaces, too. I was going to say that's circular. the gallery back there, and you can go out to the exactly. courtyard. Yeah, so kind of a large... Um, open up a door here that can then, in nice weather, be used to extend that open space, really. And essentially our vision is to take it from what it is now to, yeah, the Blue Stem Gallery with um, continuing some of the themes that we see in the downtown at the moment with art murals, um, a welcoming open corner, active office space, and then this is the entrance to the gallery on Cherokee Street. Um, so who are we? Um, this is my family. We, as I say, I grew up in, in Leavenworth. We have two kids. We live in Arizona. We just moved to Arizona a couple of years ago from Germany. My husband is German. Um, and yeah, our kids are Jonah and Ellie, age six and three. We, uh, we started our own company. My husband and I have been working for larger firms. And we started a company when we moved to Arizona. My husband also has his own company. I'll go, I'll go through that in a little bit more. Um, and we are proposing to yeah, be the property developers to um, manage the building development and site. And then we would also, once it's finished, we would pull in um, a property management company such as Green and Meyer Rentals. And we've been, I went to school with Jeremy, so we've been speaking about, um, yeah, what, what does the market need? You know, where, what does he think of the proposal, et cetera, just to get that local knowledge. What, what kind of rents are reasonable? What can we expect when the project is finished? What does it cost to renovated, et cetera. And then we would also, I'm really passionate about um, art-led regeneration and cultural projects. And so we've been speaking with newly formed LV Arts. They'll talk to you a little bit later about their, um, their organization and how, how we think that could fit together with the building. 
And then I met, um, I was talking to them earlier, but I met today with Axis Construction. They're a Kansas City-based firm who is, they've done a lot of work in kind of historic renovation. They, they've done a lot of buildings at the crossroads in Kansas City, and they're just very interested also in redeveloping historic properties and others. This is just a start of the, the kind of local network that we would like to build. Um, so personally, I grew up out in Easton, first on a five-acre farm, <laughs> and then later on a 240-acre farm. Um, and yeah, I loved it. it we had pigs. Um, Real we, pizza. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we later, I don't have pictures of cows and um, sheep, but we, um, my mother is a botanist. She taught at St. Mary College. Oh. And Who's your mother? Jean Emerson. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. I know, okay. Small now I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good or bad? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, sorry. So something that's really close to my heart is that my mom, when we moved to Kansas, my father was in the military. My it was a lot of personal information. But um, when my parents divorced, my mom moved out to, the, to Easton and bought a farm, and she wanted to redevelop land. She's a botanist, not a farmer, but um, that was her spirit of how do you make places better, and that's where we came up with the name of Blue Stem Gallery. She took uh, land that was not farmable and redeveloped it and joined the, I forget what it's called, um, uh, there's a program where you, if you plant native grasses and redevelop land, you get um, the government helps you with that effort, and I just, I grew up with a strong feeling that it's our role to make places better, so I'm, um, I studied engineering, and my husband's an architect, and we like to do buildings, um, so I, that's my brother in the truck there, and we grew up, um, yeah, going, again, going to school in Leavenworth, one of the other ama most amazing things about Leavenworth, I think, is this global, local um, exposure that you have growing up, so I, Although I grew up in a small town on a farm, I went to school with people from all over the world, and my sophomore year, I um, followed a very good friend of mine, and I lived with her family in Australia for a year. So <laughs> her dad was in the Australian army, we became best friends, we couldn't imagine being apart, so I went to live with her family for a year, and it really just changed my life, and I think I wouldn't have had that experience had I not grown up in, in Leavenworth. Um, and it was, as you see, it's quite different to where we grew up. Um, I worked on this little, there was a little kiosk here. That was my, um, you know, part-time job was working at this beach. And, yeah, it was just a really formative experience. I came back my junior year, um, graduated high school. We played volleyball. And then this is our um, senior class. And the reason I bring all this up is I, I moved away after college. I went to college at K-State. But... Um, when my husband and I moved back to the States, we were having a, our 25th reunion, and I said to him, hey, you know, do you want to go to Kansas? <laughs> and we, my parents had moved to California, and they retired in California and then in Arizona. Um, and he'd never seen, he'd never been to Kansas. And so, and I looked, and I couldn't believe that our high school was now a hotel, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So we came back to, last year to our um, Reunion and that's my husband. We we just really fell in love with downtown. We thought it was amazing. There's what we felt living in places like Berlin and San Francisco was we felt there was a really nice vibe and a really nice spark here. And it wasn't it wasn't trying to be cool if that makes sense or it, it was just evolving. And so we 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 caught up with old friends. Um, we played in the arcade. We had coffee and donuts at Merryweather's, and we just thought what a what a wonderful place, and there's something special here. Um, there's a sense of humor everywhere. There was just a sense of community. <laughs> um, we have small children, so we thought this is particularly great. And we just loved it. I love the old theater. I, it's really nice how everything has been um, maintained, and that there's a spirit to, to really keep that spirit intact. Um, again, St. Mary is very close to my heart because I kind of grew up there, uh, running the halls. <laughs> as my mom was a single parent and full-time teacher. And this is her greenhouse um, okay. at the edge. Yeah. yeah, and then we went out to the farm where I grew up. Um, and the, the people that bought our farm have, have, took it. Yeah, it was a really um, beautiful experience because they, they um, my, my 
Yeah, I guess our family put a lot of love and effort into it, but they did the same thing for the next 25 years. And when we went out that day, their daughter was getting married on the farm, um, but they welcomed us in. And my husband couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe. He's, he kept saying, where are we? Because people were just continually opening their doors. We went by our parish church in Salt Creek, and the woman mm -hmm. came up to me and said, were you in the St. Patrick's Day parades and stuff like that? <laughs> so, I mean, he was just kind of blown away by the friendliness, the openness, um, and we loved the quirkiness and the... Um, I don't know, the coolness of the downtown. Um, we tried to grow sunflowers in Arizona, and because there's not that much water, they were <laughs> tiny, so we loved to be, these were on the, my family farm. Um, and I fell in love with this building, so I thought, wow, this is awesome. Let's go see what, you know, we like to walk around cities and see what's possible, what could go, what could go in certain places, etc. And I contacted my friend, um, Jeremy, and asked him if we could go tour this building, and he said, hey, the city has a request for proposals out for 600 Cherokee. Why don't we go look at that, too? Um, and so that's kind of how we got here, and I guess our personal story. Um, professionally, my husband yeah, is an architect trained in Germany. He did his master's at Columbia, New York, and then moved to London after he worked his working visa in New York and um, has worked for you know, uh, quite a few good firms there. And then he started his own business with his father, um, doing energy consulting, started investing, just is a real entrepreneur at heart and a designer at heart. Um, and I, I did architectural engineering at K-State, and then I moved to London also to work for um, a large global consulting firm called Arab. They, they do every type of engineering and are known, I guess most known for... Um, being able to engineer the projects that architects don't believe are possible. So we, we got to learn a lot of nice things. While I was there, I did my master's in um, city design and social science. So I'm also very keen on how, how does design make places better and how can you, um, yeah, how can you change the way people use places, et cetera. Um, we lived in London. We got married in London. And then we moved to Berlin. And my work transferred us to San Francisco. And then, yeah, we're... We're in Arizona now, <laughs> close to my parents and with our, with our kids. So we both have 20 years of experience, and we're excited to, to give back. Um, I started my career doing lighting design for very high-end galleries. Um, what's interesting is galleries became cultural institutions in their own right. They have every project type in them. Um, one of my first jobs was the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco. Um, we're also used to managing and and working on projects remotely. You need a very strong local team, of course, but yeah, we're, we're used to that. Um, and then my master's, one of the, yeah, the key sayings was that in cities, good design is social. So you always have to think about the social integration and how your project is affecting um, its local context. In that note, I, um, I love to do strategic work and we worked on the, I was, um, a member of a firm where we did the lighting design advice for the Olympics in London, and it's just great to see projects from start to finish. It's wonderful to see. This was the east end of London. There was nothing there. Um, and it was three different boroughs, and they completely redeveloped it to a park. And it was designed always for what happens after the Olympics, and it was a really great experience. Mm -hmm. um, this is a project in Korea that I did with a firm in Berlin. Um, and then I think this is a project in Memphis, and this is probably one of the main inspirations for wanting to do something here in, in Leavenworth. Um, the, the owners, so I, I became involved in San Francisco as a lighting designer for this project, and our firm also did the structural, the civil engineering and acoustic design. And the project was a, this was the old Sears building in, down in Memphis, and it was, it used to be the heart of the community. And then as things changed and evolved, it just became vacant. It sat empty for 20 years, and everyone said to tear it down. Um, there were two clients, an art history professor and a, another client who said, no, no, we've, um, we've lived abroad, we've seen how these buildings can really be special. <coughs> let's get a team together, let's, um, create a, they, let's create a vision and let's redevelop this building and this area of Memphis. And just being part of that project, it felt, um, it just felt worthwhile and useful and they, they were able to do it and they started with a, they, set up a crosstown arts organization that became really the heart of this this project and building 
Um, and these are some finished images of it. Yeah, and it's a real cultural hub. I mean, they, and this was a $200 million renovation oh. job. <laughs> so part of me, I also thought, wow, if they, can, if they can do that in their town of Memphis, you know, we can do this in Leavenworth. Um, in terms of residential experience, my husband and I have, on the side of our full-time jobs, we've renovated our own properties, and, and it's been, yeah, really successful, so, that, so much so that we thought, hey, instead of doing this on the side, why don't we create a company when we move to Arizona, and we can just start to, to do this as well. And it's, it's definitely a part of this project proposal is to do the, the top floor residential. This is our, our apartment in Berlin, um, and we put in, yeah, we broke through um, the kind of living room and, and um, bedroom and put in a new kitchen, etc. cetera. Um, we also lived in San Francisco and we did the same thing with our apartment in San Francisco. We had the top floor, um, our neighbors had the middle floor and then we shared the ground floor. Um, and we put in skylights and my, my husband's really talented in terms of space planning. So he can, in terms of making floor plans really efficient and space is working really well. He loves to do that in and we put in the smallest bathroom that you could get <laughs> in code um, of an old air shaft and a closet in San Francisco. And we were very proud of that. We used the old subway tiles. I don't know if you've been to San Francisco, but they, they have a distinct tile that was created only for the BART station in San Francisco. And we found that and put it into the bathroom. But we just have fun. We enjoy it. And, and it works well. Um, this was our home in, in Germany that we recently renovated before we moved to Arizona. Um, and we basically just opened it up. And we, we love taking old buildings and kind of making them better. This is some more images of that. We read the bath, which this used to be a balcony, an external balcony. Um, so yeah, anyways. And there's a lot of, um, I guess, examples of historic loft conversions. And there's a demand for residential properties in, in Leavenworth. Um, commercial office spaces. This was a project in Germany that I, the team that we did. So I, I led the lighting teams for Arab for this company in Berlin and San Francisco. And when I was there, I didn't speak German yet. <laughs> so we started entering competitions. It was a recession. It was 2009. Um, so there wasn't a lot of work, and everyone was kind of eager to, you know, to win new work and get jobs. And there was a competition for this police station in Germany. It's a, um, it was called a light and art competition and there were four of us in the team and we we just had fun with it so we we came up with a concept and an art sculpture installation where at certain angles it um it forms the like crosshair pattern but it's very abstract and you only see it from one angle of the building it was also a, an energy efficient competition we had to design to passive house standards which are just extremely extremely energy efficient standards mm -hmm. And what I loved about this project was kind of the enthusiasm we had as a team to, to do it. Um, the not letting constraints really stop the creativity. And also, um, in Germany, one of their, they have a, like a favorite television show is called um, Tatort, and it's basically um, like a crime, like a CSI type thing, not as fancy as a CSI. But, um, and this is a, just a shot of the final installation. So... Yeah, at a certain point in the gallery, you get this crosshair, but otherwise you don't, you don't see it. So, um, yeah. And then in San Francisco, we were involved in kind of a, a really wide range of office developments. What's I never enjoyed commercial um, properties until I moved to San Francisco because all of the tech companies are kind of rethinking um, what what it, what is working and how can we work together. And, and the projects were really interesting. So we we worked on the. We did the engineering for the Apple campus um, and just kind of define every limit there. And yeah, that back to our back to our building. Um, two projects that two reference projects that I wanted to mention um, that I see kind of really inhabiting the spirit of 600 Cherokee and this gallery that we're proposing is this is in San Francisco. It's um, a gallery. Space called 111 Minna, and I would go there probably, you know, two times a week, maybe three, to meet with people. And they they displayed art on one wall, and otherwise they served coffee. Um, it was just a creative space to meet, and they also did events there, and it, it worked really well. It was very simple, um, and yeah, it was a, it was a beautiful space, and that's kind of what we like to do. We're also interested in 
in, in the small office space of availability, especially with the pandemic, of um, we don't propose a co-working space, but that could be an evolution of the office spaces. So starting with kind of small offices for one to four people, but it could evolve into a, um, a we work or a, a co-working type of space. I know that Leavenworth, the Leavenworth local has some kind of work sharing areas, but and then they often work with industrial buildings, with um, historic buildings, and, and also with kind of a creative component. Yeah, and again, just, you know, little pods can be inserted into the gallery or something like that. Um, so in terms of the specifics for our proposal for 600 Cherokee, we really want to bring the building back to its, um, its kind of distinctive heritage. So clean up the facade, um, you know, um, restore the glass. I, I looked at the, up the historic reports and the, you know, the cladding is an original and just reveal the brick behind and, and really just kind of open, <coughs> open the space up. Um, yeah, and then back to the, the plans um, and the renderings. And then these are the, the floor plans. <coughs> Um, in terms of, yeah, financing, I've listed everything out, out in detail. I'm not sure how, how detailed we want to go with this <laughs> presentation. Um, but we, when we came up with this project, we really wanted to create a gallery and arts center. But um, speaking you know, with our kind of local advisors, we wanted to make the project as financially viable as possible and stand sure. on its own as much as possible. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to rely on um, donors necessarily or... Yeah, and when we kind of started working out the square foot, the cost per square foot and what, what we needed, um, we also wanted to look at ways that we could incorporate um, a nonprofit such as LV Arts into this space. So these are the, these are kind of estimates looking at developing the ground floor and the top floor. Um, the external courtyard kind of reduces that that usable space in a way and, and lowers the cost of that too. Um, so I met with a construction team today and they, um, we've been talking for a few weeks and I sent them our proposal and they were also able to get on site. They brought an abatement contractor on site and they had to look at everything and were able to, to kind of back up our numbers. So we feel that okay. it will take, you know, the building has had significant damage. When I I have to, you know, when I'm honest, if I'm honest, when I first looked at the building, I was like, whoa, no, we don't want to touch this. <laughs> um, but as we, as my husband and I modeled it and looked at it and looked at the opportunities and looked at the connections on 6th Street and on Cherokee, the courtyard at the back, we just felt it kept having more and more potential. With that being said, it's a very difficult time right now to be starting construction. Right. Um, there's supply chain issues, interest rates are going up, it's just... Yeah, um, it's a difficult time. So we were very conservative in estimating $100 per square foot, um, knowing that every service would have to be completely um, updated. And, and then, you know, the courtyard was $25 per square foot, just as a, an estimate. And we then also believe that it's not out of this realm that the remediation of the building, a new roof, um, just making it useful, removing asbestos, um, getting rid of mold would be in the region of 200000 And the contractor, she confirmed that today, the, their estimator, and just said, yeah, that's, that's not an unreasonable figure. Um, we also wanted to allow at least 10%, which may not even be enough in terms of increased material costs and supply chain issues. So I met with Mutual Savings Association today. They're also very positive about the project, and we are looking at um, working with them should this should this go ahead um, yeah and I guess what in terms of our proposal I think what we're we're asking for um, would be some support in bringing the building back to a kind of base build status so um, I, I know that Penny has asked us for a form to kind of fill that out and and share with you the, the details of that um, and then in terms of project timeline, this is what we foresee a little bit, um, design through the end of the year, construction through 2024, and then final commissioning. Again, with supply chain issues, I, we would need to revisit this, and I would like to get this 
double checked with the contractor team if and when you know we're commissioned or they're brought on board. Um, yeah, another note we I've always worked on um, kind of lead certified buildings for the projects in the states, and we would um, also aim to have this building lead certified, and and would also apply for um, sorry for the various rural energy program grants to do LED lighting, to have smart lighting controls, et cetera, potentially solar on the roof if that if that's possible. Um, yeah, this and then there's some supporting documentation from yeah, from mutual savings with regard to the down payment and the loan that we would um, be looking for. Um, Green and my rentals have also confirmed our cash project cash flow estimates in terms of rents that could be expected. And um, yeah, and then in terms of the gallery space, I'm I'm really eager to um, to build on this concept of global and local, and it's why I was really really excited to hear um, about LV Arts and their creation. I feel if we are to have a successful gallery space um, or mixed use gallery space, it would be important to have a an art installation. So I would look to commission and install a permanent art installation that would give the galleries a presence um, kind of internationally and give people a reason to come visit Leavenworth and something that wouldn't have to be um, wouldn't be high in terms of maintenance and changing etc so there would be a permanent and a temporary component of that what you know one of my favorite exhibitions is um, this ex exhibition was at the Tate Modern in London it was a law for license weather project and what was fascinating about it was how he change the way people use the space. I've never seen people lay on the concrete floor before, but as soon as he put up a sun and, um, and a mirror, it, yeah, this space is full of people kind of bathing in the sun. Um, and it's also, yeah, something I'm interested in learning more about. There are um, very, very beautiful yet simple light installations, for example, that we could um, propose for the building that could also give it a presence at night um, and during the day. Or this is a, another favorite um, kind of sculptural interventions that could be, you know, on the building in the courtyard. Something that wouldn't, you know, would make it special. Um, this is Anthony Gormley in in London, and he he works with figures, and he, everything he does is a I don't know a, a, a form of figure. And this was so is that like a bronze statue mm -hmm. or something? Yeah, oh. and they were all over. It was um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all over London. And it's mm -hmm. I don't know. It's kind of that, that interesting yeah. perception of who's looking at who. Yeah. Okay, but, um, and then I'm starting a PhD in the fall um, in design, environment, and the arts. Um, James Terrell is a light artist and is um, doing his kind of lifetime work, and is collaborating with the Arizona State University um, and. Yeah, a dream would be, I mean, to engage an artist of some sort of um, caliber to yeah, install something permanent. And also just, I would love to study and look at how, what are the ripples? Like, how does this, this one project, you know, what, <coughs> what does it touch and how, how do you measure that? Because it's very, this, um, I was discussing with Penny, I think, before this presentation last week. There's tangible and intangible results of projects and how they can affect a community, and I would love to study, um, yeah, study that. And I would love to to use a real project to do that. Um, and with that, I would love to introduce um, LV Arts just to say a little bit about their organization and their yeah interest in the project. Thank you. Hi. We will get we prepared for you just to kind of go over some things that our organization has done sure. in the past year. Um, I did prepare a statement, if you guys would allow me to read that. Um, as I'm a teacher, and I'm not always the most brief, and I wanted to just say what I wanted to say <laughs> and not leave anything out, but do so, um, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Short in time. So. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, my name is um, Michaela Fitzgerald. This is Brooke Bristow. Um, we've been incorporated. We're a 501c3, um, and we've been incorporated with the state. Uh, for a little over a year. Um, I'm a teacher by day. Uh, I have my undergrad in uh, secondary English education. Um, with, I'm, and I'm also endorsed in K-12 through art education. Um, currently, I'm um, earning a Master of Arts in Education uh, through the University of Nebraska. Carney, do you want to um, I attended KU and got my um, BFA in 2005, and I've been working in Kansas City as an artist and illustrator. And, an art director uh, for the last 17 years. 
Um, I grew up in Leavenworth, and uh, now I raise my kids here. So that's part of one of the main reasons I think Michaela and I both volunteer for LB Arts is because we want to see things grow and progress and have opportunities for our kids in town. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay, so I'd like to read this statement to you because we really do feel like that we would become the heart of this building um, and that we could offer our community really cool things um, culturally and arts-based. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we'd like to point out that the heart of our organization's mission runs parallel to the goals outlined in the Leavenworth 2030 Comprehensive Plan and its aim to cultivate a stronger sense of community as well as to offer more unique attractions in Leavenworth. The arts act as central pillars to our organization and we intend to use them to cultivate a stronger sense of placemaking and community. We will do this by facilitating inclusive and accessible programming and events for residents and visitors alike. Together, we will hone and shape our skills through exploratory classes for all ages. Together, we will celebrate our humanity through dynamic, diverse, and ever-evolving art exhibitions. Together, we will build, broaden, and nurture a love for the arts as they become a visible and vital part of the community, essential to quality of life for the present and future generations who have decided to make love and worth their home. LV Arts aims to become a pulse for our downtown. In part, we will function as a partner with artists and local arts-based businesses and organizations to create a unified front for the arts in the Leavenworth area and beyond. By becoming a member of LV Arts, artists will receive representation, promotion, and potential job opportunities. By promoting arts-based businesses and organizations centered around music, dance, theater, visual arts, culinary arts, martial arts, and more, <laughs> we will act as a liaison to the many pockets of arts opportunities already available in Leavenworth. LV Arts will become a one-stop shop for arts-related needs and our interests, and we will be happy to connect the community with members of our arts family. Another function of our organization, as we strive to cultivate a stronger sense of community, would potentially take place at the Blue Stem Gallery located at 600 Cherokee upon approval. With this space, we will invite residents and visitors downtown to explore contemporary art and engage in other arts-based opportunities. As LV Arts believes art is for everyone and everywhere, we will work diligently to provide exhibitions that speak to the many diverse experiences in our community and the world. Headed by both paid staff and volunteers, we will become a steward of educational programs, um, including exhibition tours for schools and community groups with curriculum support, materials, uh, youth activities, guest speakers, special event, and other visitor amenities. Uh, in a city otherwise known for its history, LV Arts would like to provide a way to use art as a means for building a more vibrant future. We care about Leavenworth because we're invested here. Um, LV Arts board members have lived in this community long enough to see it evolve, and we are passionate about improving the local aesthetic through our arts initiatives. We envision our downtown with engaging artworks visible on every street. People will come to explore and experience our unique Leavenworth vibe. Our community projects will commission professionally painted murals and creative artscapes at places like our library, in our parks, and on the facades of buildings that would otherwise go unnoticed or neglected. The Bluestem Gallery at 600 Cherokee would be more than just a headquarters for our organization. It would be more than a gallery or an event space. It would create lasting ripples of positive change throughout our community. And what a beautiful masterpiece we think that would be. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. I guess just a final note is it's really critical for a project like this that we uh, we have buy-in from many different areas of the community. So we have um, you know buy-in from the government. We have private investment. We have local nonprofit energy mm -hmm. enthusiasm. And yeah, I guess our, we're really excited about this project. We think it would be wonderful, and we're we hope that you are too. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Do you have any questions? Griff? <clears throat> yeah, uh, actually, it's, uh, um, just a so real quick, and I appreciate the presentation and laying out all the details. You guys did a good job of that. Um, can you tell me kind of um, the split in your mind right now? I know things are still kind of rough, but sure. office space versus actual sure. gallery space? Yeah, um, let me find it. Yeah, the we have um, the office space is about fifteen hundred square feet. Residential would be twenty, about twenty six hundred square feet, and then the gallery is close to four, yeah fourteen hundred okay. square feet. Okay. 
Now your 2024 projected open for business, you know, date. I know, obviously. I, I work in supply chain in my day job too, so I get it. There's yeah, even of, since the time of submitting this to, to now, <laughs> interest rates have gone up and it's things been, have been delayed. So. It changes. So and that's in only a month, right? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, <clears throat> is that is that pretty, you know, is, is that a good target? Are you leaving it open, obviously, right now? Yeah, you know, sooner the better, but uh, is that, can you shed any more light on your thoughts for, um, do you have any any fears of it being extended beyond 2024, a considerable amount? Sure, yeah, um, definitely. I, I feel like we're in a time right now where we can't necessarily, um, control that I, I know I mean the contractors are doing a wonderful job in terms of juggling everything so if for example electrical components are not available right at the moment so they're trying to finish everything else and work in a way where that lag can not delay the whole project so um, I think we, we were generous in this timeline in terms of um, you know understanding that it's a public project that, you know sure. there's approvals pro processes mm -hmm. and things like that a review I'm sure um, we I think it's it's realistic, but okay. No, that's um, cool. I, I yeah, different I like folks the, that work on different projects. Some that yeah. plant down in certain areas of right. their supply right. chain. So, uh, can you tell me any more, maybe about the? Um, uh, I want to say here, Let me just just get my mind. Um, kind of your uh, the, the target audience that you're looking, you know, for your your gallery. Do you see it more, you know? Younger generation, older generation, what what do you kind of, what are your, I'm just kind of curious, you know, thoughts on that? You know, in line with LVRs, I think we'd like it to be for everybody. everybody. Mm -hmm. um, for kids, for, you know, retired military, for, you know, there's, there's such a unique mix of people in Leavenworth that I think we'd love to provide something that helps to unite all these different, mm -hmm. um, you know, people different from socioeconomic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have, a, my son has special needs, I would love programming for kids with special needs. Mm -hmm. um, just everyone can bring their own you know, interest to that. But yeah, we see it for everybody. And well, it could be a draw for tourism, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. if you had certain exhibitions mm -hmm. there or whatever. Yeah, we'd hope to do one at least quarterly. I mean, we're just getting started. And so. mm -hmm. But we've talked about how it would be a space for, right. you know, we could have a local youth um, competition or we've just recently done a sunflower competition. That would have been a wonderful place to be able to display all of those and let everyone get to come down and see the kids' artwork, you know. It would also be a wonderful chance to work with St. Mary's College. Um, right. you know, they have the Lincoln exhibit every year. Maybe their senior shows could be um, down there to bring, again, those parents from out of town, um, you know, into town uh, to come stay and, and have a, you know, a big kind of celebration for those seniors graduating and moving out of the arts department. But... Um, yeah, we would love for it to hit a lot of different um, people, for sure. Cool. Sorry, Frank, go ahead. Is there a Blue Stem Gallery located anywhere? In the I did Midwest? Google it. Huh? <laughs> I did Google it. Um, not that I could find, but it doesn't mean it's not. Yeah, I'm just trying to yeah, yeah, get, yeah. A, get a picture of what it would look like. Yeah. Oh, if you oh, sorry. Are, if they already no. have, yeah, do you have one? Oh. Do you already have a? Do you already, already have, have a blue stone gallery? Would this be a second blue stone gallery? Oh no 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 no. no, no. Okay. So this I would be the first. I, 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 I okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I knew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No no. This would be the the one and only. And <laughs> is there anything in the Kansas City area that may be close to it that I could possibly like visit, look at it, um, experience it? I would say the oh, Kansas City um, Art Association. They have a new building. Um, and they have a new, they have a gallery in there that is very revolving and rotating and has a lot of smaller short shows that are really highlighting. They, they also have artist studios in the building. Okay. And so those artists get to be featured in the gallery space. So I would say that's a really good one to look at. Or even yeah. the Lawrence Center. Exactly. Mm -hmm. that's what I was gonna say. That was our start was the Lawrence yeah. Art okay. Center. Like how do we do an art center and can we do a major right. space on the top I've floor? been to the Lawrence but, Art Center. I've never been yeah. to the, uh, yeah. But there's about. then a realistic, we're, you know, this is, my family, like if we have our own firm, we're not a huge property developer, or we're not. No, I got um, it. So I was also kind of thinking, how do we, how do we do a small yet usable gallery, kind of as a first step? You know, there's other spaces in Leavenworth, but how can we? Ideally, this project would kind of fund itself yeah. through the um, 
the the office spaces and the residential. And it would kind of be, yeah, a smart kind of starting point. Like, ideally, I would say, you know, we've always envisaged that, you know, LV Arts has that corner office. Um, and it just, it starts this art movement. But hopefully, you know, they could grow to a bigger gallery somewhere else. Or, yeah. We will grow to a bigger gallery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we could take the co-working space in, in, the, in the Blue Stem Gallery. Yeah. yeah, and thank you for your presentation. Appreciate it. Yes, good presentation. Yeah, no, it's a great um, presentation. Hi, Michaela. Hello. <laughs> I know Michaela from when she was about yay tall. Yep. And I didn't recognize you earlier. Um, I have a couple of questions. One, you see your primary resident as being the, uh, the residential upstairs, the people residential, and the offices. I mean... To more who's, fun. who's going to be your primary to resident in the fun. gallery? I'm, I'm thinking you're, you're imagining it would be LV Arts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then, uh, then you're looking for, you're yeah. going to try to rent out all the above, uh, the upstairs lofts. Yes. As well as all the retail, the uh, rental space, the offices yes. on the bottom. Is right. there going to be any retail at all? No. No retail. Um, okay. I mean, it could evolve. When we first started, we had the entire... When we first started modeling the space, we um, we had the entire kind of ground floor as a gallery, and then mm -hmm. uh, we, yeah, we it was just this. It's a numbers game in a way. It's spreadsheets of okay, how can we how do we pay for this? So then we we kind of took back this part of the building, made it put in a four hundred square foot office here, and then a meeting room slash office <laughs> in the corner here with a kitchen and a, um, a copy room. So the the co working spaces, people go work at cafes, but. You can't print things. You can't have meetings there, and so this is kind of a um, a way to. It's it's kind of a pseudo co working space. They, they ideally the offices would be rented out, you know, for a year, mm -hmm, um, at least. Yeah. Right, and but the the nice part, the reason people want to work here instead of a coffee shop or instead of in their homes is that they can go to the courtyard and meet and talk with other people. There's there is this kind of networking capability and then there are office amenities so um but it, it is flexible i mean we we thought if the gallery was more successful and there were additional revenue streams we could you know you could break out this wall you could put in a little bookshop i mean there, there's lots of um mm -hmm. evolving potential uses for it but at the moment yeah this we see all of this to be kind of rented out this would be shared um, yeah. amenity space that would kind of be shared by all the tenants and then but the courtyard and the gallery itself would not be rented out. I think there is a scope for potential event space, but I don't know that Leavenworth needs more event spaces. So it, it would just be more events for the people in that are already mm -hmm. using that space, if that makes right. sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not and as a separate event. event. Yeah. Right. Not as a book your wedding here. I mean, maybe if they want to, okay. Right. <laughs> right. Right. But um, not as the, that's not one of the main drivers of the, of sure. the project. Yeah. LV Arts is focused mainly on um, visual arts. We are inclusive. We like to, you know, highlight as many of the arts as we can and partner with community groups who are already doing things in music, like the Tune Shop, for instance, or the RCCP in theater, um, and really just work with each other to highlight the various things that are already going on, um, whether it be, you know, a visual gallery, and then we invite a dance group in to do a performance in the gallery. Like, we really want it to be very experiential and something that like people are going to come to just to for the experience itself. You know, music outside in the courtyard would also be wonderful. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But not limited to visual art, necessarily. Okay. I was wondering if you were yeah. including mm -hmm. performing arts of any type. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I can right. Can you give me the, the, the measurements, basically? How wide and how deep will the, uh, the main gallery be there on the first floor? Um, I'd have to measure it, but it... Yeah, I'd have to look at the floor plan. Um, if you don't have it right now, I don't, don't have worry it right now. It. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's about what is it, fifteen hundred, thirteen hundred square feet? I think it's at fourteen. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what you said before. Fourteen hundred square, square feet. No, no, I don't mean square feet. I mean yeah, length measure. by depth. Oh. Uh, width by depth. Mm. Oh. Is like I said, if you don't have that right now, don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. I, yeah, whatever I'd say would be wrong. So. <laughs> yeah, you can get that information back. To Might have been in our hand. And then, our, if I can ask you, we got, yeah. how much entrepreneurial experience do you have? Um, 
So I don't as much, but my husband has quite a bit. So he set up his own firm in Germany, and that kind of provides... So he's an architect, but um, his dad is an entrepreneur and has, um, is a lawyer, but has set up a number of different companies. Mm -hmm. And our livelihood comes from his energy consulting firm that he set up in, in Berlin and Germany um, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And he had these amazing ideas at the time um, of like a passive income and how you set that up. And so yeah. he's doing that, and, and that's, that's worked out really well. For okay. us, and he built, you know, their kind of website and infrastructure, et cetera, um, and also started kind of doing private investing. So he has quite a bit of entrepreneurship. Did you just say private investigating? Private, private investing. investing. Yeah. Okay. It was one of women. Yeah. How, how'd the one get connected to the other? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And it's good to see you. Did you? Did you say your name was Bristow? Yes, I'm married to Bristow. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I know. I see your dad all the time. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Yeah. Uh, I didn't have any questions at this time. Usually I like to review everything, and mm -hmm. I might come back and ask you for some information. But um, I love your enthusiasm. Thank you. You know, <laughs> I, I get enthusiastic, and I love the packet. But... Um, and it's nice just to see this building how it is now in your vision, you know, for the future. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Would it be possible to get a, a copy of this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank yeah. you. We submitted when the, um, we submitted an electronic copy. Oh, yeah. paper. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll send, send you all a copy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be terrific. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank no, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Take five. We're going to take yeah. a five minute break. Sure. <laughs> so Penny. For the second presentation tonight, I'd like to introduce Sean Wilcott. Um, he'll present his proposal and also introduce his team. Okay. And he brought refreshments. <laughs> well, they told me they told me no go, so there's just air in those. So. Oh. oh, darn. Yeah. <laughs> we can take one of my hopes. No. <laughs> um, okay. As I get started here, first thing I'd like to do is thank Penny for everything through the whole process. This goes back to I think the first talk, talk February, maybe somewhere in that area. So she's been great back and forth. Uh, over the over the time frame, I also want to thank the city commission as well for the time tonight to kind of go through and listen to the proposal and, and welcome any questions even through the process. So if there's questions as we go through, feel free to cut me off or jump right in, and we can pick back up as as we go. Okay. Um, so as the as the uh, presentation goes, it'll be pretty much a, a full, well-rounded aspect of things. I wanted to start off by introducing uh, my wife and I. Uh, we're we're the owners of, of Wilcott Brewing Company. Um, kind of go through a, a very fast-paced introduction of that. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the existing Wilcott Brewing Company, where we're at today. Um, then we'll kind of roll right into the project presentation, uh, what our proposal is with, with the actual property at 600 Cherokee. Uh, we'll go through and, and touch on a couple of benefits uh, that we feel that we bring to the community with, with the proposal. And then we'll wrap up with Q&A as well. Mm, sure. Um, so, kind of starting off, uh, my name is Sean Wilcott. Um, I am a sixth generation Leavenworth native on my mom's side and at least a fifth generation on my dad's side. Uh, we go, go back um, many, many years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fourth generation business owner. Uh, my great grandpa had a Wilcott drugstore out on 7th Street. Um, my grandpa, his son, had Wilcott liquor store, which was attached to that drugstore. Um, my dad actually had Wilcott Law Practice, which is right across, literally right across the street here on Shawnee for about 20, 25 years. Um, my brother um, has Wilcott Woodworks here in the community as well. Um, and then we would be looking to bring Wilcott Brewing Company um, to kind of tr carry on that tradition with the Wilcott name. Um, I went to Kansas State University, graduated mechanical engineering. Uh, since then, I've been out into industry, uh, multiple manufacturing aspects of things. Uh, my wife, uh, Jennifer Wilcott, she's here as well with us. Um, she's a Lawrence native. She was born and raised in Lawrence, uh, spent her early years there. Rock top. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, she ended up relocating through her high school years and finished out high school up in Oregon uh, before she relocated back to Kansas to go to Kansas State as well. That's where we ended up meeting was in Manhattan. 
Uh, she ended up graduating with a social science degree uh, at that time and then picked up after that graduation. After we got married, she ended up going back to school, got a teaching degree, um, and has since also got her master's in, in teaching administration. Uh, so she, she's currently a teacher and in her, we'll say, spare time, has been actively running the uh, tap room for Wilcott Brewing Company um, as well. Uh, recently, she's put in her notice. She's actually notified uh, the school district where she's teaching at uh, her intentions at the end of the school year to come full-time at Wilcott Brewing Company. So she'll be stepping away from that education world and fully focused um, on, the, on, on the business. Uh, we have three kids. Uh, they are a sophomore, a freshman, and a sixth grader. Uh, we're raising them in Holton, Kansas, which is about an hour and ten minutes northwest of here, give or take. A uh, small farming community that's about 3,200, um, so it's a, a very small, it's a county seat. Um, though uh, they're, they're very active in sports, um, we, we do good, good uh, try to be good on sporting that, but we haven't really taught them yet how to do their laundry, so we're still working on <laughs> cutting the edges on that one a little bit. Uh, Wilcott Brewing Company, um, as I said, it, it's located, uh, existing today, um, down in the downtown district of Holton, Kansas. Um, it, it's a, uh, we uh, brew and package on site um, where we end up producing it. Uh, we package in 12-ounce glass bottles and six-packs, as well as keg product for distribution in five counties currently today in Kansas. Um, after we opened up the, the brewery itself, we had a second expansion at the end of last year where we opened up an 1,800 square foot uh, tap room uh, where we end up bringing in patrons from the community and, and from outside where we serve our product as well as wines from, from regional wineries and other local business um, offerings as well. Uh, beef sticks, beef jerky, popcorn, things of that nature. Um, uh, the business itself, uh, this, this year we were actually very honored uh, when we ended up being, being recognized by the Holton Jackson County Chamber of Commerce with the 2022 Unity in the Community Award. Uh, we very much focused our, our attentions around our business and we kind of have the core principle that first we need to bring value to the community, next we bring value to other businesses in town, and then finally, we bring value to the to our patrons, and that's kind of the model that we that we've been focused on since we've opened our doors. Um, we also are, are very honored at, at the recognition from the Kansas Small Business Development Center in Northeast Kansas. Uh, they recognized us with the 2021 Up and Coming Business of the Year Award. Um, that was uh, uh, given to businesses who, who draft business models, uh, execute those business models, build a strong foundation and then show uh, potential growth and, and expansion and excellence. Uh, we, we focus again very heavily around community. Uh, we have a lot of community events uh, around it. We collaborate with multiple businesses. Uh, there's a picture there of a shelf with, with a whole series of custom mugs. Uh, Holton's lucky enough we have a glass blowing shop in town. Uh, we've partnered with them to, to create a uh, mug club membership and part of that is those members actually go down to that glass blowing place to create their own beer mugs to where they bring those back and have them at our, at our facility. Um, we've worked with our, our local community. Uh, this is kind of a, a rough sample here. Last uh, 4th of July where we did a custom labeled product. So we had a custom uh, brewed beer where the label itself actually advertised the Jackson County 4th of July event and it tells on the side the different things we have going along with dates and other information associated with that. Uh, this product was distributed through our, our five county distribution area. Uh, to help kind of get the word out and promote that, that business. Um, and then we do street celebrations. So last year for our grand opening, we ended up working with our city to actually shut down the street that adjoined the, the property. Um, had an outdoor event where we brought in live music, uh, partnered with a number of the restaurants in town to come set up uh, their, own, their own booths and sell their product at the event. Uh, we're working uh, here for the Memorial Day weekend, a uh, very similar event. Uh, Holton has their uh, glory days through the Memorial Day weekend, which is an antique car show. It's the uh, class reunion parade. It's, it's a big deal in Holton. And some of the organizers of the car show reached out to us and, and asked if we would help engage kind of an after party. Um, so uh, my wife and, and team have been very focused and, and have successfully planned uh, for that. When the car show is done with the awards at 1 o'clock, then we're actually kicking off a, a after party starting at 1 o'clock to kind of collaborate and work with the city on that. 
So the, the real fun part of it here, which is, is really what we're here to talk about, um, for about the last eight months, um, we've been sitting down and starting to evaluate areas and opportunities to expand our, our brewing company and take it to some other locations. Uh, through that evaluation, um, we, we had looked at three communities that we were in the process of evaluating to take our expansion to. Um, with the uh, roots and the history with Leavenworth, it was on the list. Um, Leavenworth also, between the Leavenworth, the Lansing, and, and the military base here, is about 55,000 population, uh, according to 2019 records. That kind of factored into it. Um, we have a, a college uh, in, in the community, as everybody's well aware. Uh, so add all that together, uh, based on our experience as well as industry standards, uh, Leavenworth should be able to support easily two, if not three, microbreweries in the industry. And we currently sit at zero. So that, that really was a, one of the draws that had us look at, at that aspect of the community. Um, through that, uh, we kind of, through our evaluations, came across the, uh, the proposal, the, the request for proposal. And once that started to go through after the first tour, uh, basically abandoned or paused the evaluation of the other two communities and really started focusing on this chance and opportunity sure. uh, to work with Leavenworth. Uh, we felt that the, that the location of the property, the amenities the property had, uh, as well as the redevelopment to the downtown, it was, it was a really nice fit for what we were looking to do. So the, the property itself, we've had the opportunity to go through the property a couple of different times. Um, there, there is some significant work to be done on the property, as, as I'm sure everybody's aware with that as well. Uh, the roof itself has multiple areas of damage where, where there's a significant leaking through. Uh, the water control systems uh, basically are, are not routing the water in the proper areas. It's not collecting and draining water off. Um, there is some structural framework on the northwest property itself, so not only is it into the, the, the roofing membrane, uh, there's actually severe rot with that, as well as some structural settling on that area of the property. Uh, the exterior of the building itself, um, there's some brick tuck repair that needs to be done to that to bring it back to restoration. Uh, windows and doors, everybody can drive down Cherokee and see today that, that there's some windows and doors that need to be worked on with it. And then some minor cosmetics to dress, really dress up the property itself. Uh, the interior, um, there's a long list there. Basically, it's a complete gut job. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. They're uh, all new electrical, all new watering. HVAC system needs completely upgrade, replaced. Uh, flooring, uh, the insulation that was in the roof, which wouldn't meet modern code anyways. That's all water sogged and rotted. That needs to be completely replaced. Uh, restrooms in it. Uh, and, and just the basic cosmetics. I mean, it... it for lack of better terms, it's a complete gut through the whole property. <laughs> what our intentions with the property would be uh, to open up a second brewery where we would produce the product on site as well as a tap room. Uh, basically use the, the successful model that we have working today in Holton, duplicate that here in the Lemworth community. Um, for those of us that have been around for a while, the Mike's CDs building is what I always referred it to. That mm -hmm. uh, would actually be the, the brew house. Um, we have an eight barrel steam fired two vessel system. Um, it's a used system, uh, but it is, it's the little sister to the, to the system that we operate today in Holton. Um, that comes with four fermenters and, and all the supporting utilities and equipment. Um, being used, uh, you know, there's a plus or minus on that. One of the major pluses for us is uh, we could physically drive up on a trailer today and, and throw it, start in the, the process. So it really cuts down on our lead times associated with the project. Uh, we'd be looking to add uh, back on that northwest corner uh, where there is some substantial structural damage. Uh, basically, that part of the structure we would propose, it, I classify it as a complete loss at this point. I would tear that, that area of the, of the property down re-expose the original 1800s, late 1800s, early 1900s brick. Um, you can tell by the construction of that area of the property, it's got CMU block walls. Uh, it's not original to the property, so from a historical standpoint, I don't think it would really uh, hold any historical value to it. We'd be looking to bring back that historical exterior of the original property and turn that into a beer garden, uh, wine garden, patio area. Mm -hmm. Then for the, uh, the home video section of the building, if you will, um, that would actually be the tap room itself. Uh, so complete gut job on that. Um, we'd end up fully renovating the whole facility, bring in uh, new laboratories, restroom areas, would all be brand new. 
Uh, we'd bring everything up to code. Uh, we'd end up having a, a meeting and gathering space. So we have today a small area in our facility that was starting to get a lot of utilization. Anything from the PTO, local PTOs used it a couple of times. Uh, the Shriners um, have come out and used it as a meeting area. Um, we've had some other small businesses come in and use that. So it's an area we would like to try to duplicate to where we can have a small meeting venue to where we can have uh, small groups come in and utilize that um, it, for free. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's part of the business, but it's a nice venue for that. Uh, we bring in a lot of live music, so it, it helps really bring some life down to the, to the downtown of Holton. We'd like to go ahead and duplicate that aspect of it. Uh, we're very family friendly oriented. Uh, so we end up having a lot of our tables actually have board games built into the tables to help promote a fun environment, welcoming environment for kids. Uh, we're in the process right now of actually making a homemade root beer to kind of help appeal to that aspect of the, of the family as well. And though not part of this original proposal, uh, the upstairs has a lot of square footage to it. Uh, what we would be looking to do with the upstairs is actually bring in a maker space, uh, which is an area, uh, it's like a collaborative environment uh, to where home hobbyists, uh, schools, um, uh, clubs can all gather and kind of focus on kind of technology driven and areas of things where they may not have the ability to invest at home or don't want to invest at home but have access to those types of resources. With the uh, equipment? With so the equipment, so like 3D printing, for example. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's an environment where we'd be looking to bring in 3D printing, uh, laser die cutting, mm -hmm. uh, tables and circuitry areas, robotics, um, th basically mm -hmm. make a space where you can't necessarily build, say, an EV car outside, but you can mm -hmm. kind of get around those home hobby ha aspects of things. Hands-on experience right there, yep. Yep, exactly. Um, again, this isn't the original proposal on that. Our, our main focus really would be get the business established, get it open. Uh, but we would be looking in the future to be bringing the, the makerspace upstairs. Sure, support it there. Yep. I have, I have a question. Sure. Um, so having a brewery here, having alcohol, there's a certain percentage of, of income that has to come from food. Is that correct under our ordinances? No, there's different rules and regulations for distilleries versus breweries, um, but I'm not aware of any regulations related to food sales making up a portion of it. I'll have, okay. I'll have to look into that a little more. Okay. So I can tell half of it. Um, so Kansas is a three-tier system, and, and they liquor by the drink, um, which is set up for establishments to sell on-premise. On uh, that's broken down from the state level, they break it down to a county level, and that has to go through a specific process in the county to be able to, to vote to accept that. Um, we went through the process in Jackson County last year, which is what drove us to, to put in the tap room. Leavenworth County has already passed that. That was one of the things, okay. one of the aspects that we ended up looking into. I did not, can, I, ha, I cannot confirm if the city has a more restrictive policy, but Leavenworth County does allow, okay. uh, does not require the 30% food sales. Okay, okay, I couldn't remember how that, that worked. Okay. There was... I'll look for us, just okay. to make sure. Yeah. So, thank you, sorry about that. Sure. Um, Timeline-wise, uh, in the packets that you guys have, uh, basically it's the first half of that is the presentation. The middle part of that is, is the original proposal that we had we presented to the city. Um, if you go through that, you'll see a timeline in there that's slightly different than the one you're looking at here. Uh, basically, they hold the same principle, uh, which is uh, we're, we're ready to rock and roll with the project instantaneously uh, upon approval. Um, there's very, I mean, it, it's obvious that a project of this nature where we're working with the city through the acquisition of the property, um, there's some steps up front that would have to be gone through. Sure. Uh, but, but the timeline I'm presenting here uh, basically shows uh, that we're ready at this point in time to, to move instantaneously on the project. Um, once we do that, if, if we once we acquire the property, uh, demolition would begin. I've already got have a roofing contractor aligned. Um, we were technically we're already penciled into their schedule to have the roof replaced. Um, again, having a brother in the construction industry local, um, he's put me in contact with uh, plumbers and electricians. Oh, so, and, um, so I, we've, I've already reached out and got the subcontractors aligned. Um, they're, they're able to work on this time frame as well. Uh, we would be looking to install the brew house itself in July of this year. Um, and then we would, uh, if construction were to start um, basically in early June, we would be in a position where we would have the interior complete towards the end of September. 
and our goal would be to have a Oktoberfest grand opening um, where we would try to, to have a celebration uh, this fall. And then once the business is up and running, back to the, the statement earlier, we'd be looking to bring in a maker space, go through the details and design work of that starting next year and, and into 24. Gotcha. Okay. So experience-wise, um, the first brewery that we have today up in Holton, uh, my wife and I had purchased this back in 2015. Uh, this property itself was, was in extreme disrepair. Uh, I had done all the design work myself, um, went through, and it was a, a full renovation through the facility, uh, cleaned everything out. I wish I could say I was that young when we started, but uh, that's actually a picture of my son who was in there learning how to run a jackhammer. So. Um, the facility itself was a full-blown renovation. I did all the, the system design um, through the brew house side of things, the steam lines, all the glycol systems. I also did the installation and startup of the, the whole equipment. Uh, we ended up running our first commercial batch through this um, at the beginning of, uh, actually it was Valentine's Day of 20, of 20 one is when we ran our first production batch. We did have the opportunity to acquire the building next to us, which is our tap room. Um, we ended up buying that at auction. It was actually the building was going through the, the was being condemned. It was going through the condemnation process through the city of Holton. Um, the property owner at that time went ahead and sold the property the weekend before the city voted to, to take action. Um, my wife and I acquired that property in September of 20. Um, prior to liquor by the drink passing, so we sat on the property until that November when Jackson County did, uh, voted in favor of revoking that law. And once that action took place, right after the first of the year, uh, middle of January, we started our actions of, of the demolition process. Uh, so this was a significantly more involved project. Um, once we got into it, the building itself was built in 1890. Um, to put in perspective, the building that we started with was built in 18, or 1926, I'm sorry, it was built in 1926. So a little bit different construction between the two. Uh, this building was built in 1890 when we started going into the process. Uh, the, the rot through the property itself was, was just, unfortunately, we were not able to save both stories of the property. Uh, but we ended up coming back, having to uh, come back in with structural footings through the whole property, uh, structural steel through it to reinforce it. We were able to save three of the original walls from 1890, so we did a restoration through those. Um, ended up rebuilding it to, to modern codes as well as food establishment standards. And, and we had done this to where we were able to open for our grand opening of September 25th of last year. So uh, this project itself had, a, had about a nine-month window, including complete demolition. Uh, Funding-wise, um, we're proud to say uh, over the many nights, weekends, and holidays that we've slaved away, um, missing uh, some vacations in there, uh, my wife and I are, are, are proud to say that, that Wilcott Brewing Company is wholly owned by us. Um, we, we are the only owners. We have no investors. We have no partners, um, which gives us the, the benefit of being able to pull the trigger when we make a decision. We don't need a board to vote. We can just run with that, with that project itself. Um, this particular project, we will be gaining uh, some personal debt through it. Um, the last page of, of the packet handed out, you'll see the bank's letter that we've worked with. Um, we have been pre-approved. They're, they're fully updated with the project scope, the details of the project, um, and, and they're on board and excited to partner with us again for this project. Uh, so the, the, the project as a, as a whole is fully, um, fully financed as we stand today. Um, we would be looking at, at uh, utilizing the $15,000 uh, grant from the city of Leavenworth, but it's non-contingent on the project. What we'd be looking to do with this grant really would be more community promotion. Mm -hmm. um, some of the stuff we're working with right now with, with the city of, Le of Holton is trying to build like uh, maps. Uh, so we, we have a lot of tourism for, for mm -hmm. our, our business. Breweries seem to be a destination point. And so we're working with our city to try to put a, a city map right in front of our brewery to help kind of inform people that there's our downtown or our business district. We'd be looking to do things like that or, or maybe re, uh, revitalize the face of the building to help the, the aesthetics to the community aspect of things. So we would be applying for that grant through the city of Leavenworth, but that would not be, the, the project as a whole would not be contingent upon that. Sure. Uh, 
benefits, and, and I can always put the old cliche, we're a commercial business, so we have tax dollars, and we, we, we bring jobs. Um, but really, the, the main benefits that are unique to the, to the brewery itself, tourism, as I was just stating, um, Saturdays we found in Holton uh, that when we open at 11 o'clock to about 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturdays, about 60% of our customers are out of town. Um, they, they travel to Holton specifically to come to the brewery, um, which is a really cool aspect for us because if they're coming to the community to, to check us out, they're buying lunch down the street, they're filling their truck and their cars up with gas. We have a really, really neat downtown, like I said, with the glass blowing shop and home shops. It's really a draw to help help drive the community aspect of things. So tourism is a benefit that we feel would, is, a, is one that we would bring to the table. Uh, community collaborations, um, as I had previously stated, we, we try to work very closely with a lot of businesses in town. And if, if we all win, then we all win type of mentality. Um, we do not serve food in our establishment. And, and how our model works today is we welcome outside food to come in. Uh, we actually carry the menus of the restaurants in our community in our establishment and have a couple of them will actually deliver um, to, to our establishment. We would carry to have that same mentality um, when, when we would be looking to come to Leavenworth where we would try to collaborate with the other businesses down in that area. And then the celebrations uh, with the Haymarket Square being one block away, um, they're, they're just, I mean, that just screams opportunity at, at having outdoor community events and, and partnering up through, through those aspects of things. So that's a 100 mile an hour review. Kind of, kind of good <laughs> that's all right. Aspects that's of things. Yeah. yeah, but I'll open it up for questions. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Fellow commissioners? Questions? It's already answered them. Yeah, you yeah. very yeah. thorough. It's very thorough. Uh, yeah. You know, so you, you said you've, you've been there, you've done it, you've taken something bad before, you've turned it around in a quick time frame, is what I heard you say. Um, can you can you can you speak to um, you, uh, you mentioned a family environment and everything? How does that <clears throat> you know? How does that look today up in Holton? You know, right now I know it sounds like you're experimenting with a few things, uh, possibly for this. You know, this this site. What what do you see um, as far as folks come in? I mean, with the event space too. Can you can you maybe give me a better picture of how that can play out? You see. Just kids coming with their parents to go hang out, you know, and, and sure. just wonder if you just give some more flavor around some sure. of that. So having tables with games, I mean, that, that's a quick quick opener where folks can come in and play. Um, we see parents and kids playing games together. We see kids, high schoolers, so our, our daughters are in high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have high schoolers that come in and just kind of use it to hang out a little bit. Um, early in the summertime when we first opened, um, there was a small group, and I don't, I don't know their ages. They were probably, I'd say, from 8th grade to 5th or 6th grade um, that would actually ride their bikes, dump their bikes in the front, and they would come in, order Pepsis. Some of them would bring Pepsis from Casey's. <laughs> and they would just sit down to play the game. So we, we kind of opened that up and welcome. It's kind of a cool feeling to, to know that your, your space is being utilized in a safe environment. Um, for those kids on a Saturday to come hang out and play board games. Mm -hmm. um, we have kicked around some ideas of trying to integrate some, say, electronics. And uh, the top view, I think I even showed a game room in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the top view there, we, you know, trying to build a, a, some more environments around, trying to make it a family-friendly environment. Um, being a, a craft beer or, or just a, a brewery aspect of things, it, it's a different environment than, say, a bar, which bars aren't bad. I'm not, I'm not throwing, mm -hmm. throwing stones on that. Um, but the environments are typically a, a different environment than, than uh, an establishment of that nature. Um, so they're more welcoming around, you know, music. Um, again, families come in all the time, have dinner. Um, they bring their kids in. And, and real quick, sorry to change gears on you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, the, the exterior, what were your thoughts again on that? You talked about, you know, showing more actual brick and stuff like that. Can you walk me through that again, uh, sure. your plan for the outside? Sure. So we want to maintain a lot of the same aspect that we currently have in Holton. So we're, we're looking to build a brand, if you will, mm -hmm. so kind of associate that with. Um, there was a picture. Um, 
So the, the natural stained wood, and we also actually have a corner entry on, on our existing tap room as well, so that, that kind of fits in with the same brand. Mm -hmm. With a small awning over the top of that, and the picture doesn't do much justice, but that's actually cedar shingles. We'd be looking to kind of incorporate that same look and the same design around the front entry. Sure. Um, the, the gray siding, that the metal siding that's up there today, uh, our intentions at this point in time would be to come back and replace that with the same wood that we have, the same wood look that we have with our tap room today. Um, the awning itself that's over, I'll say the mic CDs, um, I would like to try to save that if we can because that being the brew house, the, the glass windows is really the exposure that we would, kind of the intent of putting the brew house through the windows is that people can be walking down the street and actually see a, a brewery in action. Um, so have, if we can maintain the awning um, and, and still make it look good, I'd like to have that in case it's raining out, outside. Sure. Um, but sure. the brick itself, you know, trying to, to keep that brick look. Uh, the beer garden or the, the wine garden patio area, um, I don't know if you've been through the property yourself or not, uh, but the, the south wall and the east wall of that existing room uh, is the original brick of, of the structure. So we'll be looking to bring that back um, to exposure outside. So basically demolishing the roof and the two exterior walls there and then coming back with a privacy fence is what we'd be looking to do on that side. Okay, and then lastly, just recapping, <clears throat> outside of the city grant, not looking for any additional funding, feel pretty good about having a handle on the supply chain uh, yeah. and looking to go live in the fight of September. Our, our objective, and again, a lot of that be contingent on how quickly we can get started. Sure, sure. The, the unknowns aspect of that is, is kind of... <clears throat> I thought that was brick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, again, you know, I, uh, this, this building right here that you're looking at, I think I had a picture in there that showed you a shell. Mm -hmm. um, and we were able to turn that in nine months. And, and yeah. walking through the facility, the, the 600 Cherokee right mm -hmm. now, I feel pretty confident with having a strong understanding of the current condition that the property's in and sure. being confident with, with hitting that. All right. Appreciate that. It's my questions, everybody. So so you talked about the wood. So the the entry would be that black stuff would be taken off and all that. And then the brick would be on the side of the brick be kept. I mean you've got that siding over the brick. So that siding that you're looking here, what our intentions are to replace the metal siding along the side. So the second story where the gray metal side is, right. is where we'd be looking to put that type of siding in, in place. Oh, okay, the wood. So you'd be covering the brick again. We would be taking the metal down to replace with wood, yes. So you'd be covering the brick again. In, in that area, okay. yes. Okay. Just curious about that. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, what would the entry be for the maker space? So right now, today, um, there's access on the east side of the property through a door. We'd be looking to utilize that same access where you'd go up that staircase and okay. enter in there. Great presentation. I know. No. Both. I don't, I don't yeah. have any questions. Yeah, very thorough. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. I don't have any questions. Wish you guys could get together yeah. and do it all, do all one. I know. Yeah. Get with Michaela and do the whole thing. Oh, oh. Oh, go ahead. Um, that's an idea. Um, how many, how many different kinds of beer and ale do you produce now? Uh, currently, we have eight beers on draft. So uh, we no have no ales. I'm sorry, no ales. Well, uh, act, technically, they're all ales. Um, okay. So difference between ale and lager is mm -hmm. the yeast that you utilize. Yeah. So um, sounds like you're familiar with the with the craft beer world a little bit. <laughs> so. We have uh, four flagships that we actually package in bottles that we offer through our, our dis uh, distribution channels today, um, which are actually three six packs. Uh, so we have uh, this is a this was a special event, so that's not a traditional offer. Yeah. one. We have an American wheat, a single IPA, a double IPA, and a sweet stout. Uh, so those are the four that we have on flagship. Um, right now, the four that we have on draft. In addition to that, um, we have a, an amber ale. Uh, we have our winter spice ale, which we're getting ready to pull back off. Sure. Um, we have an Irish red, and we have a uh, wit beer. Mm -hmm. um, would you be looking also at the, the possibility of then packaging your uh, your brews and selling them locally through uh, through market uh, through you know stores? That's actually one of the, the models we were looking at. So for our expansion uh, that we've been evaluating the different communities on. 
uh, was not only from a, uh, a taproom brewery, uh, but also expand out our footprint. Um, we, we worked with a, a special event in Lawrence last year where we actually signed the distribution agreement with uh, O'Malley's, which is based out of Lawrence. Uh, and that actually, based on that previous event that we had done for them, our, we actually have legally set up a distribution channel today for Atchison, Leavenworth, Douglas, Jefferson, Franklin, and Jefferson. We don't exercise that territory because we're not into that territory with, with strong presence yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but we already do have a supply chain and the intent to, to now roll our distribution into that territory. When you said O'Malley's, we're talking about a different O'Malley's than the one in Weston, right? Different O'Malley's. Different O'Malley's. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure. I didn't have any questions at this time, good but yeah, great presentation. Well, Sean. thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think we had to make a field trip. <laughs> I know. I, was, I, I had that down too. Besides those other art places, but yeah, I was thinking. I, you know, I've never been During to Glory Colton days. before. I have. It's a nice. It's yeah, a nice I've never town. been there. In the fall, it's gorgeous when all the trees turn and everything. Yeah. And we were lucky enough, we're one of the communities that still has a strong downtown square. So being a county seat, the, the center of the square is the courthouse. And we've got four streets of, of businesses oh. around that. Um, and, it, and it's doing quite well. It's pretty strong. So. It's, and I think uh, your wife said, is it 3,200 people said it? 3,200 is the town population. Population. Mm -hmm. so. That's nice. Talk about everybody knows everybody. <clears throat> Yeah, what do you what yeah, do kind of like love more? Sorry, you're all related. Say, yeah. we, we found yeah. out coincidentally we actually grew up in the same house until I was different years, obviously. Yeah, um, we sold the house to the Wilcott family. <laughs> Talk about a small world. Yeah. Are you related to Della? Yes, that's that's a uh, cousin. That's my dad's cousin. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Are you related to Fred? Fred? Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just made that name. I don't know any Fred. I don't know any Fred. Wilcott's a rare name, so you know Wilcott. I probably yeah. related yeah. to him in the area. Yeah. <laughs> Sister Amy. A good yep. friend of mine. Sister Amy. Yeah. Estimation yeah. on potential hardy. jobs this could bring to the community. Just, just oh. out of curiosity. I, I didn't know how you guys were planning on running it. And, so know. the model itself, having the brewery in Holton, we'd be looking to have some shared duties that, that would add value. So uh, some of those would be part-time Leavenworth, part-time Holton. Uh, where those people reside to be determined. Sure. Um, we would be looking uh, to bring on our full-time brewer, part-time brewer um, on that. I, for today, I'm doing all the brewing myself, um, so we'd be looking to bring that on with an assistant um, at one of the two locations. Uh, Caitlin actually is our regional manager today. I'm up in Holton. She'd be bringing coming down here. Uh, I would foresee a potential assistant manager, depending on on how things shake out here. And obviously, the every every. Uh, bartender or server or anything that we have associated with that team uh, we'd probably be looking at the 12 to 15 range would be my best guess uh, okay. through rotations okay and it's easy for me to say because caitlin manages that so. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> right? yeah what kind cool. of hours and, and what days of the week are you looking at so I'm creating current, uh, currently up in holton i can use that as our current business model so we were right now four to nine on wednesdays four to nine on thursdays four to eleven on fridays and eleven to eleven on saturdays um, and they, Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and you're in closed. Holton. In Holton, we're not open. Yeah. Um, we feel I feel that the Leavenworth market can actually support uh, more days of the week, whether that's a Monday, Tuesday. I, so. um, I, I don't. I don't personally foresee a Sunday opening. Um, that may be again. I'd have to lean on my team back here to, to kind of steer me. They run the day to day in the tap room. I mean, it's just <laughs> but I, I don't foresee you a Sunday. Just brought up something else though in my head. Um, what about sports events? I mean, are you going to have lots of TVs all around the tap room? or? So our current tap room, with our small 1,800 square feet, we actually have four, four main televisions at the bar and a big screen back in that little event area. And then the guys are lucky with an additional one um, where, where they end up going to the restroom. Uh, we would be looking to do the same. <laughs> what? Uh, That's not <laughs> Uh, and we'd be looking at a very similar aspect of things where there would be a number of TVs throughout the facility. Yeah, some oh. days might become important. <laughs> I mean, seriously, some, a lot of folks I uh, think you might attract on Sunday afternoons in the fall. Well, sure, yeah, during the chief season, well, yeah. And, and Leavenworth is a, is a different market. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. with Holton being a small farming community, we've yeah. really catered to that 
to that market. Um, we do feel that Leavenworth has a much stronger potential for, for additional foot traffic um, oh, on sure. days where we're not where we're not going to see the it. military base right there. Well, we we have a lot of people who live downtown too. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I think Thank my you. wife left a business card. Yep. Yes. So if anybody has any questions at any point, yep. Yep. Time, feel free. You're yes. Yes. <laughs> she left yours. So we, we don't call her, we call you. <laughs> Dishwasher, Mr. Well, Mr. She can Fix answer it. the questions. I'll just make up the answers. Thank you so much for sharing. Glory Day is over Memorial Day weekend. That's the Saturday Memorial Day. Uh huh. Come down, check it out. We'll actually be outdoor live music. We'll have some. Some restaurants set up outdoors catering and mm. and you got the TV in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. We'll, we'll never see it again. I didn't see that. No, no, I don't. Yeah, it's it's it. Exactly. Thanks again. Uh, so I guess the next step or the next question is where what's the next step right so um, what I'll do is um, let you all let the governing uh, body just determine if you need further information from either of the parties I'll okay. give you a couple of days to figure that out hear from the public and then we'll check in if you need a little bit more time then maybe a couple weeks um, so we'll just do that and okay. uh, We'll keep everybody informed and um, put it out, of course, when it's going to be on in the next commission meeting. So, yeah. okay, that's all we have for now. Sounds good. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you much. Okay. Any other questions or concerns? Nope. Anything I, else? You know, just one thing, yeah. uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, just maybe if anybody's reaching out asking for <clears throat> financial pieces or anything like that, let's just make, you know, my recommendation would be that it's just very black, white, and clear. <clears throat> which group is asking for what and what that's going to mean financial yes. impact on the city and stuff like that because two different black and white proposals from a financial standpoint right so. right no good it point is. um i didn't have anything else this evening either so. all right we're adjourned <laughs> <laughs>